We're going to spend a little time this afternoon talking about extreme weight four descent of hunting errors. What they are, what EFOC does for your error's performance, how it's measured, how to build them, and how to tune them. So let's take a look from the data we put together and see if we can determine an actual degree. How much does FOC affect error penetration? See if we can quantify it. So we're going to look at six different graphs here, and all we're looking at on these errors is the change in the FOC and the change in outcome penetration between matched sets of errors. Same broadhead, same shaft diameter. This is from a 54-pound long bow. We have a normal FOC versus the FOC error. So we got 10.3% and 25.7% FOC. Both errors weigh 724 grains. A 15.4% FOC increase gives us 39.3% increase in penetration. This graph is for all shots of that 40 pound. So we're seeing that we have an increase here of 20.1% in FOC, and that gives us 70.2% increase in penetration. Now this includes the shots that did not breach the bone. So if we do a different graph and we take only the six bone breaching shots in each group, for that 20.1% increase, we have a 96% increase in penetration. The next three slides are three sets of errors from the 82 pound bow. This first one looks at sets A and B, which is a normal FOC error versus an EFOC error, 11.8% versus 21.3. Now in this series with the 82 pound, all of the errors are matched, same shaft, same broad head, all are above threshold, 100% bone breaching rate. We did have a little difference in weight here, 16 grains. The normal FOC one, uh, was 689 grains, and the EFOC one here is 705, so it's 16 grains heavier. For the 9.5% FOC increase, we got a 23% penetration increase. Now this set is taking sets B and C from the 82 pound bow, the EFOC error versus an ultra EFOC error. So we got 21.3% versus 31.4. Here, the EFOC error is the heavier, 705 grains, versus that 655 grain, just barely above threshold, EFOC error. Our 10.1% FOC increase yielded a 25% penetration increase. And the third one takes sets A and C, the normal FOC versus the ultra EFOC, 11.8% and 31.4. 689 grains for the normal FOC, 655 for the ultra EFOC, a 19.6% FOC increase and a 49% increase in penetration. Now if we look at the change in penetration for these errors, we come out with a graph like this. The first thing you notice is these three right over here are about level with each other and these are considerably different. Well, what is it about these three sets? These are the three sets from the 82 pound longbow. They're all above threshold errors. We have a high percentage of errors out of each of these groups completely traversing the thorax and hitting the offside penetration barrier. In other words, they're hitting the offside ribs and not breaching it. So if that were not there, we would probably have more soft tissue penetration after breaching the ribs. So if we're looking at trying to get how much change we get per percent change in FOC, we've got to throw these out because we've got an influence from a bone barrier, a penetration barrier. So that leaves us with these three, and they fall pretty much in line. However, this one was all shots with a 40-pound recurve. And because we have some potential influence, even though it falls in line, from the onside rib barrier, we're going to drop it out. So we're really going to look at just these two sets to try to determine how much penetration we get, how much EFOC influences penetration. And what we end up with is this. Now we're looking here 
as the penetration gain per 1% change in FOC above 18%. So even though the errors were down in the 10, 11% range, we're not going to start counting from there. We're gonna look at the FOC change only from the 18% forward. Why are we doing that? Because in the initial testing, we couldn't document any penetration change until we exceeded 18%. So we're going from 18% upwards and looking at the penetration increase. And you can see that in the first one, and that would have been the uh, 54 pound longbows set, we get 5.9% increase in penetration for 1% FOC. And in set three, which would have been the post breaching shots from the 40 pound recurve, we're getting 7.4% for 1% gain. And that's going up to that ultra EFOC at 31.9. And what this is suggesting is the same thing we saw in the earlier graphs. The higher the FOC gets, the more penetration gain we're getting. So that the change between 20 and 21 percent is not as great as the change between 30 and 31 percent. Not only is that change higher percentage-wise, it's even more divergence if you look at the inches of penetration, because the inches of penetration are already much higher when you get up to 30 percent. You go from 30 to 31 and make a 7 point whatever it was, 7.4% increase of that higher penetration you already have is quite a bit of gain in inches. So that's the reason we try to strive to get the FOC as high as we possibly can.